I am uh, Dr. Carter, and I'm here with Jamar Mosley, uh, taking an oral history in the recording studio at, at Texas A&M University Commerce's uh, James G.T. Library. We do this little tag thing on uh, April 19th, 2012. Oh, okay, so I'd like to start with just some easy questions, um, uh, just to kind of get us a, get our bearings on kind of uh, what generation we're working with, kind of your background there. So uh, when and where were you born? Uh, I was born in Killeen, Texas, uh, June 6, 1989. 1989. Yes, oh, my gosh, the whippersnapper. <laughs> 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 so did you, you said that you, uh, did you live, did you, were you raised in Killeen? Did you uh, mm -hmm. where? I lived in Killeen um, until the fourth grade, and then I moved to San Antonio. Okay. And uh, I went to elementary there middle school and high school and then um, I went to uh, Washburn University in Topeka Kansas and that's where I started college and played football and just learned the, how to be alone and away from family so yeah, yeah. were uh, did uh, were they did they recruit you for football yes ma'am because mm -hmm. my brother played there also oh so it was it was kind of like a gimme type thing but I mean it was it was cool it was a nice experience so I loved it the mm -hmm. weather was just crazy so <laughs> was it oh, was the crazy. tornadoes and mm -hmm. and then the snow and then we used to have to run in 31 degree weather and mm. it used to be so cold so when did you come here um 2009 okay I came here in the spring so, but I was, uh, when I first got here, I was a loner, really. I really didn't talk to anyone. And then um, I had to, actually, I had to walk on to the football team because Coach Morris, that was his first year here. Mm. So um, I got offered, but the coach got fired, and mm. I had to start from scratch. So, and that's when I walked on. I made the team. And What does that mean, walked on? Um, walked on is uh, you're not on scholarship mm. so you just it's like a tryout mm -hmm. you make the tryout and then you go through spring ball and if you do good they'll put you on scholarship so. okay okay so how do you you've managed uh, uh, being a college player at two different universities how do you manage that that's a hard schedule isn't it yes ma'am it really is you you really have to be mentally prepared I mean because if you're not everything will just go by so fast you'll lose track of time and the schoolwork won't get done so yeah so yeah so how did you get mentally prepared um I usually write like my schedule down what I try to do every day um, my mom tried to teach us that when we were young because we used to always go everywhere but um, we just have to have a I try to have a guideline mm -hmm. even if I didn't do everything on the list at the right time, I'll at least have a guideline like, okay, I have to do my homework this time. I have to go here this time. Mm -hmm. Practice starts there. Meeting starts here. What can I do in between? And so basically I wouldn't really sleep because you have to in, – in order to do football and study, it's kind of hard to get rest in. And then I had a girlfriend at the time, so I that was really – mm -hmm, <laughs> I had to have time for her, so I had to manage it pretty well so I'll write down a list of things what I would do right when I wake up and just prepare myself did you say that you uh, you and your mother and uh, how many brothers did you have, do you have? I have three brothers and one sister wow okay and you guys kept a very busy schedule mm -hmm. so it and we always played I always played sports well I started football when I was in the third grade okay. so ever since then it was schoolwork football and I'll come home and do all that jazz. And same thing will be, it will be like tradition, kind of. I'll do the same thing over and over again. So yeah. I kind of got used to everything. So once I got to high school, it was just, I had football after school. So it will be easy. And then come home, whatever time left I have to do schoolwork, I would try to do it and then take a shower, go to sleep. And do the same thing over again. How much older is the brother that went to Kansas? Um, well, he's 27. Okay. So I'm the youngest out of the whole family. And uh, everybody else go off uh, into sports and college and all of that stuff? Um, my, my oldest brother, 
He's 33. Okay. Um, he played he played football at a junior college. I mean, I don't really know because I mean I was young. I really didn't ask a lot of questions, but I know Rashawn played basketball. I mean football at Washburn. Um, my brother Jerome he played um, basketball at Palo Alto. Mm-hmm. It's like a little community college. And then my sister just he, she does uh, cosmetology. Mm-hmm. She does hair and stuff like that. So. And then it's me. Mm-hmm. So. So when you were playing in third grade, uh, that was in Colleen still, right? Yes. Uh, and so, did you? Uh, were you playing for school, or did you play in the neighborhood, or? It was. It was um, for the boys and girls club. Okay, a lot of people got their start there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? What was what? Uh, how often did, did you hang out? Did you remember any any of your mentors in particular? Um, well, that's. I really remember when I moved to San Antonio. Okay. It was a lot. It was a lot better. But the Boys and Girls Club was like my first start. I mean, I was okay. I was the, the youngest out of the group because it went by age. Mm-hmm. And um, they didn't have no weight class. So you can be as big as you can and still. So, but when I moved to San Antonio, I played for Edgewood Seminoles. Mm-hmm. It's like one of the best. I played Pop Warner then. So Pop Warner is like you go to, you play state. No, you play city and then you play state. And then if you win state, you go to Florida. Yeah, you go to or- Orlando, and you just you just have fun and go to Disney World, and you just they have the games on TV on ESPN. It's pretty cool. Wow. So, but it w- it was it was fun for when I played for the Seminoles because I met uh, Marcus Graham. He played uh, football. He's number twenty two. He his last year was last year. His senior year was last year. Um, but he used to play under me because I play. He played peeweed and I played junior midget. Mm-hmm. But I was young, but I was playing with the older guys, and he was older playing with the younger guys. So one day we um we were in the locker room, and I had my Edgewood shirt on, and on the back, you know, I has your names and your numbers of the pe- players on the team. He's like, "You play for Edgewood?" I was like, "Yeah, you played." He was like, "Yeah," <laughs> and I was like, "No way." He was like, "Yeah." Uh, we started naming coaches, and uh, Coach Raul, Coach uh, Coach Carillo, we started naming everybody. Oh, you know Willie? Yeah, I know Willie. And so it was pretty cool. It's it's like a, a big family still. So that that was really the highlight of like when I was young because mm-hmm. I didn't play middle school football. Mm-hmm. I still played until the eighth grade, Pop Warner. So because you just liked it so much yes, and so many opportunities, and I and I felt like. It was better than middle school to me. So me and my best friends, we still played for Edgewood until we got to our freshman year in high school. We started playing high school football. Was it the same group of guys that you hang, hung out with and uh, throughout? And where did if so? Where did the guys that you were hanging out with in high school go? Uh, we all went to the same school. Mm. Most of us. We we lived on the south side of uh, San Antonio, and we all went to Southwest. So it was. It was like a big family, so we all played together. We played basketball together, CYO. It was it was a lot of fun. You still keep in contact? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's great. Still keep in contact. And you uh, you get home to San Antonio often? Mm-hmm. I go all the time. It's it's kind of hard now because uh, now that I have a car, I have to worry about gas. And then uh-huh. when I didn't, I really didn't have to pay for gas. I would just give people like twenty dollars here and there, mm-hmm. forty dollars. But it's not the same because gas is down Four here. Bucks gallon. Yes. Oh my gosh! So, and yeah. San Antonio is six hours away. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's yeah. Quite uh, my hometown is Corpus Christi. I'm on oh, the road okay. a lot for that. Yeah. I know that 35 quarter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, uh, what about your mom? Where is she from? Is she from Colleen? No, ma'am. She's from Cameron, Texas. It's like a little town. Um, it's. I think it's in between Temple. And Waco, it's like you take that, no, Temple and Belton. It's like that little, it's like a little row. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she's a, she's a country girl. What brought her to Colleen then? Um, well, they moved. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandma moved to Colleen when they were in high school. Okay. So they moved there and um, my grandma uh, owns a house down there. So they just all lived down there until she graduated. And that's where she met my dad because my dad was in the Army. Mm-hmm. So that's where she met him. But 
nest when they started their little family. Mm-hmm. Little. But, <laughs> but I wasn't supposed to be born, actually. So, because my mom had her tubes tied. Oh, and, man. Tenacious and, guy. And, 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 and I just popped out of nowhere. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Oh, surprise, 89. What took them to, uh, to you guys to San Antonio? Um, she, I think she, she said that she wanted to have a new start. Mm-hmm. She wanted to start uh, fresh and new. And she just, she felt like she was in Colleen too long. So she just wanted to get out of Colleen. That's a big city for, yeah. for a country girl. Yeah. <laughs> did but, she struggle with it or she was um, In the beginning she did. Mm-hmm. Her and my dad, they, they did. But they got through it. So it, it was it was pretty good. Was your dad from Colleen too? Um, no, ma'am. My dad's from Somerset, Kentucky. And he was there because of the, uh, the Army. Mm-hmm. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. So then um, the next questions kind of relate to, I guess, the video. Um, can you talk to me about your uh, uh, experiences with maybe stories? Have you heard stories about segregation from your family? Um, how much a part of your life was this conversation and narrative we brought in, we put into? Um, it wasn't really part. I mean, I would ask questions a little bit. Curious. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't get into detail because uh, it seemed like they, did, they didn't want to, they wanted to talk about it, but then again, they didn't want to talk about it. To dwell on it? Mm-hmm. Or, okay. Yeah, it's just uh, the memories, I guess. But my mom used to tell me that she used to go with her great-grandma and pick cotton. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when she was young and how she would uh, run outside and um, how it was it was so like across the across the street was there were Indians. Mm-hmm. So they were like best friends. And it's so crazy because they still live there today. So right. it's it's like, hey, Deborah, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Jim, hey, hey. And it's like they're so little again, and <laughs> they just have fun every time we go to Cameron. But, um, yeah, I really, and she used to tell me how um, she can get a bag of candy for a nickel and stuff oh, like stuff. that, and things were just, it was so cheap and just, you have you had to worry, but it wasn't really, like, this this much, like, you know, commotion. It was commotion, but... It was. It wasn't. It wasn't all about like what kind of shoes you have mm-hmm. on. They weren't really thinking about stuff like material things. They were just thinking about how am I going to live today? How am I going to get food? And since my mom was the oldest, she had to work. Of how many? So, um, one, two, three. It's four of them, mm-hmm. including her. So she had to go to work pretty early. Mm-hmm. So picking cotton too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she had to help my uh, great grandma. And they used to uh, have chickens in the bag. They sold their own clothes. Were they sharecroppers or they owned um, their land? No, ma'am. Okay. They, uh, oh, and she had to clean, uh, I forgot the lady's name, but she had to clean this lady's house. And she used to help her mom, uh, my grandma, clean the house. And she used to get money, and the money that she would get, she would have to give it to my, my grandma. And then whatever my grandma wanted to give back to my mom, she would give it back to her. But... It was really to help. It wasn't just to have it and just go get things. It was, I guess it was business-like at an early age for her. So she had to start cooking at an early age. And she said she used to have to wash dishes on a chair when she was young because she was, like, the only one. Mm -hmm. So she had to help because it was so hard for everybody. So she couldn't just really be a kid. Mm -hmm. But then again, she said she learn how to have fun yeah so yeah did your dad talk about Kentucky um a little bit I think he was a rebel so uh he used to get in trouble a lot they used to play football uh, and baseball they really play baseball a lot in Somerset Kentucky but uh I don't know anything about the size of that town is that a smaller town too? it's, it's pretty small mm-hmm. it's pretty small but his life doesn't it, it doesn't seem the same as my mom's um He's younger than my mom also, so that probably takes a little toll off. Are they in their 40s, 50s? Uh, my mom's in her 50s. Okay. My dad's in his 40s. Okay. So, um... Yeah, that makes a difference, that yeah. decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Actually, my mom's in her 60s. My brother's 33. My mom had my brother when she was 20. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a big span between me and my yeah. older brother, so... 
think he graduated in 97, okay. maybe 98, something like that. So, um, and you're like 2008, 2000, 2007. Seven, yeah. mm-hmm. So he really, my dad really doesn't, uh, he talks about it, but it's always about the fun things that, mm-hmm. that he was doing with his brothers. And he has four brothers, five including him. So that's a lot of boys that, and they're all, and they're all like one year apart. It's so crazy. Two years, one mm. year apart. It's so, it's having that many brothers. And it's a lot of fights right there. So I bet. I bet you know just a few of your brothers, right? Yeah, a lot of disagreements and arguing. But um, yeah, it, it seems like they had, they didn't have it good, but they had it okay. I mean, the house that they had, which my grandpa still lives in there, it's a two story house. I mean, it's um, uh, it's not spacious, but it's it's. It's comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, they made a, a room at the bottom for uh, my grandpa and my grandma. And then there was three rooms uh, upstairs. Mm-hmm. So some of them had to share a room since there was five. So, I mean, they, yeah. they worked it out. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's, a, that's the times. So um, what, uh, for as a, uh, for in the classroom, do you remember a uh, study? Did you guys stuff? I, I understand that there's not a lot of study of civil rights going on in the in the mm-hmm. in the schools, um, but that you know everyone's aware of. of uh, so you were aware from uh, from uh, school, from life, from stories about uh, the colored fountains, about the cotton picking, about the history of slavery and uh, so forth. But um, but you. But you seem surprised, and I think most people are surprised to learn that segregation was happening in the colleges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was that was that new to you? Yes, too? that okay. was that was new. I mean, I first I I seen it on Glory Road. Oh when right, I, when you I, still I, came here after yeah. Glory Road too. And, and, I, and I seen that, and I seen how like the college life was, you know, and uh, I, I basically based my my knowledge off of movies, I guess. We all do. So. Yeah. Every time I seen something that's that was just out there, it was like, man, did they really throw things at people? Like, why are they that mean? Like, I don't understand. How can they just do that? So, I was thinking, to this day, like how they thought back then. Like, why are y'all, why are y'all calling me that? Like, I just don't understand. So, like what John Carlos said, he was like, "Negro was close, so close to the the main word." It was like, why? Like, I just don't get it, and I'm trying to represent you all and this is how y'all treat me so that's how when I watched the movies it was like I seen like how they felt so I couldn't relate but I could relate because I wasn't in that 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 era but I can I can I know how it felt in a way by watching the movies and how the actors was doing a good job on portraying the faces and feeling hurt and stuff like that so I, I got the picture. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, uh, I have, I'm, I'm drawn to these narratives increasingly of the, of the, um, of the athletes representing, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, so many of our athletes are black athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so I was really drawn to uh, your desire to tell a story, uh, and you, yeah, can you kind of take us take us you, you said, take us to the moment of you struggling to write this essay, <laughs> oh, okay. and and, uh, and how you came up with the narrative that you ended up with? Oh, okay. Um, in the beginning, I was I was I was drawn really, and um, I had to do something good to get a good grade, and I put I put effort in what I had to do this time so um, it was I was looking through the archives and actually I looked through the archives on the internet so um, to see what was going on and I didn't see anything that caught my eye but the only thing I really saw was the fact that there were there weren't any African Americans in the band and, and the football playing football or anything like that and they was just like Man, so I kept on going, kept on searching, and then I just seen that there were workers. They were doing labor work and the the hard stuff. It seemed like, mm-hmm. and um, just to make just to make everything else look better, they had to do 
what no one else really wanted to do. So I just took that in mind, and um, I just put things together, and I just worked hard. And um, there was this guy that helped me a little bit um, on the on the PowerPoint, mm-hmm. and um, from there I just took it and I just turned it in and and hoped <laughs> and prayed that uh, it w- it would come out fine. And from the looks of things, I guess I did pretty good. I guess so. <laughs> so. I guess so. Um, and you had never made a movie before. Um, no, you had, okay. Never. And I know uh, you you did it first as a photo essay, mm-hmm. and uh, you kept the narrative, but you really were struggling the sequence. It mm-hmm. wouldn't. Yeah, and like I couldn't really find pictures either that were really good, mm-hmm. and um, like making it. It it was kind of like the pictures were foggy. So I really had to try to find the best picture, and I just tried to, I really worked hard. It was crazy, it was, and I felt good afterwards after I did it. It was like, man, I feel good. That's I guess good. I guess this is how it feels when you put forth effort, and then it comes out to be, you know, at least uh, great to me. I mean, now it's great to me. Do you consider yourself a creative type as well as athletic? Um, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. You've all, that's, so that's no surprise to no, you no. that you're like, I knew I had it in me. No, I, I knew I had something. And I always hear from my mom, but I just, okay, mom, I know you're supposed to say that right now, but but, but now I, I feel like I do. I can do a lot more. So just by this, I feel like I can do a lot more. Well, that's 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 wonderful to hear. Um, can you say for a second, too, um, just as a final word, uh, the, the music that you selected, um, uh, you... Uh, you said it's just a song that you liked. You knew mm-hmm. right away that that was the right music for it. Or, or can you tell us a little bit about um, that? Actually, I heard him perform this on the BET Awards. And I realized he doesn't... Because usually I listen to Lil Wayne and stuff like that. And it has a lot of cussing and stuff. But what what he was saying on the BET Awards was powerful, basically. And it kind of gave me an image and it, and it, and I realized that when he was performing, he had pictures in the background. So it was like um, he would say like power, and like he'll show a picture of someone that has power, or it was showing a lot of African American faces that accomplished things in life. So he was rapping while the pictures was coming up in the background. So it was kind of it felt good because he didn't put all the focus on him. But the focus was on, like, the band and the pictures in the background on the big screen. But he was still, it was like poetry to me. So he was saying some poetry, and then it was like his words were filling in the blanks of the pictures. So that's really what caught my eye. And if you listen to the words, it has a lot of meaning to it. So so (laughs) he's, he's pretty good. And it was just... I heard it and I just had to put it on there type thing. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd never heard of him before, but um, now I'm looking. That's it was perfect. Um, you guys have any other questions? Okay, I think we have a mic, and so thank you so much. No problem. <laughs>